Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we go back to the middle of last winter as Chris Dalton heads out to complete his red hind cull. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Because this week we've got another clip up at Kinnaird on the Hinge. Now we've been messing around with the GoPro camera early days um, just to try and get some additional footage. The problem when you're on the hill and we're filming, bear in mind, is we might have to be crawling across a, a, you know, quite a big expanse of open area. It's difficult enough to get in it for me to get in. Imagine poor old Graham behind with a bloody great camera on a tripod and it's almost impossible. So we're trying to just play around with the GoPro a little bit just to give us some of the footage that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to film. Um, sometimes we can film the stoke, we can film the deer, we can kind of film recovery, but what we're not getting is the shot and the, and the build up from basically crawl in to shot. Um, so that's a bit we're trying to work on a little bit. So uh, we've done some footage on the, on the ATV recovering, etc. So I think it will be a good addition to our, um, our filmmaking career and we'll hopefully let you see a little bit more, the bits that you don't see and you think, well, why didn't I see that? Just bear in mind you didn't see that because it's a bit like the films that Bear Grylls does when he's climbing a blinking rock face in a mountain and it's all very extreme and all the rest of it and suggesting to you that at one moment he can fall to his death. I'm, I don't think it's Bear Grylls we should be commenting. I think it's the poor bloody cameraman that's on flipping crampons, ice picks and a rope at the back of him with one hand on the rope and the other hand on the camera. Um, so just bear in mind that wherever we're filming, um, there's somebody behind me with a camera. And also bear in mind that it's quite easy for me to go out and stalk and shoot a deer, but when we're trying to film for you guys, um, it's me going out to stalk and it's Graham behind me and it's the dog and a camera and we're all trying to get into a deer and I'm trying to tell him which deer I'm going to shoot and he's filming the other one, so it's always quite interesting. So there'll be some good things on outtakes this year at Christmas, I'll tell you that for a fact. Very still morning, quite a lot of frost. Um, clearing as we kind of got out on the hill. Uh, so we, again, we used the stream gully to, to get up into the, um, the area that I wanted to work in. And again, very quickly got into deer. It's often the case early in the morning. Um, the deer, you catch them as they're moving back to find a high spot or a sheltered gully in the sun to lie up during the day. And you can catch them moving out. And I kind of quite like, like that tactic. It works very well here. very difficult to approach them. We didn't have a lot of cover, it was quite open ground, but we, we were able to just manage to use the rushes, the reeds and some little sort of slight gullies to kind of crawl into position. Very slow um, work because you're really painstaking moving without making any noise. And there were a lot of deer there, quite a big group, lots of pairs of eyes and lots of ears. But we did we did well, got into a nice position on a, a bit of a heather bank and uh, got the bipod deployed and then my only difficulty was trying to pass on to Graham which particular hind I was going to shoot, but I think we actually managed to get there in the end. The hind was cut on its own. I'd watched it for quite a while. I didn't think there was a calf with it actually, but it, it, it was a perfectly shot animal, um, but it did run, run, it ran and stood for quite a while, but clearly there was a calf with it and it, it kind of almost covered the calf. I could see that the hind was just tottering and going to drop down, so I knew she was like dead on her feet. So I actually shot the calf as well, and the calf then ran directly towards the calf before kind of dropping in, in some rushes. So 
Um, ordinarily, I would shoot the calf before the hind, but the hind was quite, the calf was a long way away from the hind for quite a long time when I lined her up to take the shot. So I hadn't, I hadn't attached her with that particular calf. So we, we managed to successfully get the hind and the calf, which we're quite pleased about. Okay, show me. Where is it? Show me. Show me. Show me. Good girl. Good girl. Good lass. I thought it was possibly an old hind that's sort of coming towards the end of its sell by date, but what we've got is an injury. Um, it is in reasonable condition, but you can see it's it's lost some some weight for a for a mature hind. But it looks to me like a, a a break or a possibly a bullet wound there, which has shattered the leg. Um, not much not much there at all. So ideal animal to take to concentrate on lone animals anyway, because generally speaking, as I said, it either old, uh, maybe a young knobber kind of wandering around on its own. But clearly a problem with this deer. Um, shattered shattered shoulder shoulder blade there as well there's not much of the shoulder blade left so you know classic correct animal to call off the hill Again, we were able to get the ATV nicely to the to the deer once we'd located them. I'm, again, it was really glad we had Zosha. I mean, the shot was, was just sort of 220, 240, I think, initially. Um, quite a large patch of rushes and undulating ground. It was incredibly difficult to actually find the deer. I think it would have taken it would have been a real grid search job if we hadn't have had the dog. But again, we were able to use the dog. She's off like a bat out of hell and, uh, and nicely overran it initially then came back round into the wind and found the hind. I don't think we got a lot of that on camera because she's so quick it's virtually impossible for Graham to follow her. But anyway she proved her worth and earned her kidneys and her a chopped up heart, fresh heart that she got this morning. So again nice morning, um, recovery quite easy on the ATV so again a fairly easy job back for breakfast. Chris there, finally managing to complete the extraction, and now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Scotland has published new general licences for 2020 and has completely removed collared doves and black-backed gulls from the licence. The licences also don't apply on certain protected sites, and ravens haven't been included on the licence to prevent damage to livestock. Basque said these developments were concerning, but nonetheless urged all its members to read up on the new terms and abide by them. Young shots shined at the CPSA Awards last weekend. Amy Eastman won Overall Clay Shooter of the Year Award, Amy Hedgecock was crowned Emerging Shooter of the Year, and Alfie Tibbles won Young Shot of the Year. Sporting Targets was named Ground of the Year, John Bidwell won the Course Setter Recognition Award, and Paul Bailey was Disabled Shooter of the Year. Head to the CPSA website to see the full details. The game season may be over, but you shouldn't forget about it just yet. The GWCT has asked all game shooters to take part in the National Game Bag Census, a confidential registry of species shot in the UK. Submitting your data, even if your shoot is only very small, will help improve the understanding of population trends, particularly of species that are otherwise difficult to count. You can sign up at the address on screen. And finally, we'll see you at the British Shooting Show this weekend. The show just keeps on getting bigger and better, and this year it will span four halls at the NEC. Don't forget to get advanced tickets at shootingshow.co.uk, and you might even see the Shooting Show team there. We'll be touring the aisles looking for the latest news, as well as doing some filming on the sporting rifle stand. So come by and say hello. That was the Shooting Show news. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.